Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Deep True Crime. I'm Manny Rodriguez. In today's episode, we are going deep in the story of former reality TV star who was convicted in a murder for hire plot after taking out a $450,000 life insurance policy on his nephew and then calling for his killing. Let's go ahead and dive into this tragic, tragic story. On Monday, March 14th, 2016, Andre Montgomery, only 21 years old, was killed in a shooting about 8 p.m. that night inside the home in the 3900 block of Natural Bridge Avenue. Rest in peace, Andre. Andre Montgomery, he is the grandson of Robbie Montgomery, who is the owner of Sweetie Pie's Restaurants in St. Louis. Robbie Montgomery was a 1960s backup singer and former Iket. Iket was what they were called as dancers for Ike and Tina Turner. Robbie, she suffered a collapsed lung and had to stop singing. She decided to pour her talents into another creative venture, a soul food restaurant called Sweetie Pies. A docu-series was created from the soul food restaurant Sweetie Pies, and it was called Welcome to Sweetie Pies, which showed the Montgomery family as they worked to expand their empire one soul food dish at a time. And so this became a family affair. The restaurant was run by family members and the TV show was about the restaurant and the family members. The main part of it was Robbie Montgomery and Tim Norman, Robbie's son. Andre Montgomery, he had appeared in past seasons on the family's reality TV show, which was featured on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Andre graduated in 2013 from McClure North High School and the ceremony was featured on the show. This was a very big moment for Andre, graduating in 2013. Robbie Montgomery in the show also says, I want Andre to become a successful man. And now I think he knows whatever he wants to do, if he puts forth the effort, he can do it. During that Monday night shooting, a second man was shot and injured in the confusion after the shooting of Andre Montgomery. Another man, 22 years old at that time, ran upstairs to help Montgomery after the shooting. That man was armed with a firearm. A third man, who was in the home didn't know the second man was there until he appeared with a gun. The third man opened fire with his gun because he feared for his safety. That 22 year old was taken to a hospital where he was in critical condition with wounds to the chest and arm. At the time, at the time, police didn't know who shot Montgomery. He was pronounced dead at the scene and he had been shot in the head. Then, in a shocking turn of events, welcome to Sweetie Pie star James Tim Norman, the uncle of Andre, is charged with hiring a stripper to kill his nephew two years after he took out a $450,000 life insurance policy on him. Tim Norman was arrested by FBI agents in Jackson, Mississippi on charges of conspiracy to use interstate commerce facilities in the commission of a murder for hire resulting in death and was booked into the Madison County Detention Center. All along, even after his conviction, he has said he was innocent of this. The drama, the, the hurt that he has put his family through, he has created such divide between the family. Robbie Montgomery, the mother of James Tim Norman, she stuck by his side through a lot of stuff that this guy has put her through. According to a criminal complaint, Norman conspired with exotic dancer Terika Ellis to kill his nephew Andre, who was shot dead in St. Louis on March 14th, 2016. James Tim Norman, the paternal uncle of Andre Montgomery. Andre Montgomery's father, who is also the brother of Tim Norman, he died in Los Angeles, California in 1994. We come to find out that 
this murder for hire plot, not known when this all began, but going up to and including March 14, 2016, James Tim Norman, Terika Tanisha Ellis, and Travell Anthony Hill together did knowingly and intentionally combine, conspire, and agree to commit an offense against Andre Montgomery by using and causing others to use facilities of interstate commerce to wit cellular telephones with the intent that the murder of Andre Montgomery be committed in the state of Missouri for a promise and agreement to pay out money along with other benefits for committing this crime. And this conspiracy offense resulted in the death of Andre Montgomery on March 14th, 2016. On or about October 14, 2014, Tim Norman attempted to obtain a $250,000 life insurance policy on his then 20-year-old nephew, Andre Montgomery, for which Tim was the sole beneficiary through Americo Financial Life and Annuity Insurance Company. This application was later withdrawn. It was further part of the conspiracy that in or about October 31st, 2014, Tim Norman attempted to obtain a second life insurance policy on Andre Montgomery in the amount of $200,000, in addition to an accidental death rider in the amount of $200,000 and a 10-year term rider in the amount of $50,000 thousand dollars through the independent order of foresters tim norman was the sole beneficiary on this policy and this is the only policy that issued also part of the conspiracy is that on or about march 16 2015 james tim norman attempted to obtain a replacement policy on andre montgomery through royal neighbors of america in the amount of $250,000, but the application was denied. We also find out that on or about September 18, 2015, Tim Norman attempted to obtain an additional life insurance policy on Andre Montgomery through United of Omaha Life Insurance Company in the amount of $300,000, but this application was denied. On or about September 24th, 2015, Tim Norman attempted to obtain another additional life insurance policy on Andre Montgomery through the Capital Life Insurance Company doing business as Liberty Bankers Life in the amount of $250,000, but this application was denied. Part of this conspiracy that the applications for all five of these life insurance applications on Andre Montgomery contain materially false information, including false statements regarding Andre Montgomery's income, occupation, health, and health history and family history. On the applications, it shows Andre Montgomery completed a housing application in which he indicated that he was employed at a shop called Tobacco Road, that his hourly rate wage was $7.25 an hour, and that in the month of July of 2014, he had earned close to $700. Also part of the conspiracy is that James Tim Norman flew from Los Angeles to St. Louis and arrived in St. Louis on March 14, 2016. Also part of this conspiracy, on or about March 14, 2016, Tim Norman and Terika Tanisha Ellis purchased prepaid track phone cellular devices at a Walgreens located in the Central West End neighborhood of the city of St. Louis. Part of this conspiracy that Tim Norman and Terika Tanisha Ellis communicated with one another for the duration of March 14, 2016 using the newly purchased prepaid cellular devices. Terika Tanisha Ellis advises Andre Montgomery to initiate all further communication with her on March 14th, 2016 using her newly purchased prepaid cellular device. Terika Tanisha Ellis communicated with Andre throughout the day on March 14, 2016 for the purpose of knowing where his location was. Then Terika Tanisha Ellis would use her prepaid cellular phone 
to communicate Andre Montgomery's locations to Tim Norman, Travell Anthony Hill, throughout the day on March 14th, 2016. Part of this conspiracy was that Terika Tanisha Ellis would use her prepaid cellular phone to communicate Andre Montgomery's locations to Tim Norman and Travell Anthony Hill. Approximately 7.07 p.m. on March 14, 2016, Andre texted his location, 3964 Natural Bridge, to Terika Tanisha Ellis on her newly purchased prepaid phone. The learning of Andre Montgomery's location, Terika shares that address after she learned of Andre Montgomery's location. Terika relayed that address to Tim Norman and Travell Anthony Hill. 22 minutes after learning Andre Montgomery's location at 3964 Natural Bridge Avenue, Terika called or sent text messages to Travell Anthony Hill at least five times using her newly purchased prepaid cellular phone. Terika Tanisha Ellis met Andre at 3964 Natural Bridge Avenue in the city of St. Louis at approximately 8 p.m. on March 14, 2016 for the purpose of luring Andre Montgomery outside of the residence. Then Andre Montgomery was shot and killed outside of 3964 Natural Bridge Avenue at approximately 8.02 p.m. At 8.03 p.m., Terika called Tim Norman on his newly purchased prepaid phone, then immediately began driving back to her home in Memphis, Tennessee. Approximately five and a half hours after the homicide, in the early morning hours of March 15, 2016, Tim Norman flies back to Los Angeles, California, where he resides. March 15, 2016, Tim Norman and Terika Tanisha Ellis, they completely stop using those prepaid cellular devices. Between March 15th and March 17, 2016, Terika Tanisha Ellis deposited over $9,000 in cash into multiple bank accounts in Memphis, Tennessee. On March 16, 2016, Travell Anthony Hill speaks with his brother Tony Whitfield through recorded jail calls to discuss Andre Montgomery's murder and Travell Anthony Hill's payment. That same day, Travell Anthony Hill accepts a $5,000 cash payment at the direction of Tim Norman. On March 18, 2016, Wally Youngnam and Tim Norman contacted the Independent Order of Foresters for the purpose of inquiring as to how to collect on the aforementioned Foresters policy, the only policy that was actually accepted through Tim Norman's deception and fraudulent activity. Tim Norman, he continues to contact the Independent Order of Foresters in 2016 on March 21st, August 1st, August 15th, August 26th, and November 18th for the purpose of attempting to collect on the aforementioned Foresters policy. Then, in September 2018, Tim Norman hires a lawyer who sent a letter to the Independent Order of Foresters demanding that they pay out on the aforementioned Foresters policy. Then, in October 2018, Tim Norman submitted an affidavit to the Independent Order of Foresters for the purpose of collecting on the policy. Beginning about October 2014 and continuing until at least as late as September of 2019, Tim Norman and while Youngnam, who goes by Wally, they did conspire to commit fraudulent activities for life insurance. The primary purpose was for Tim Norman, aided and abetted by while Youngnam, to obtain and to be able to collect on a life insurance policy on his nephew, Andre Montgomery, in the event of Andre Montgomery's death by means of false and fraudulent representations regarding Montgomery's income, employment, net worth, medical history, family history, and the existence of other pending issued or denied life insurance applications. The first one, America life insurance application around October 14, 2014, Tim Norman 
and Wally submitted an application to America Financial Life, an annuity insurance company, by which the application Tim Norman sought a life insurance policy in the amount of $250,000 on his nephew Andre. On the America application, Tim Norman and Wally listed Andre Montgomery's correct name, social security number, and date of birth. Now, the contact phone number that was listed for Andre Montgomery by Tim Norman and Wally on the Americo application was actually Tim Norman's phone number. He was the sole owner of that number since 2011. On that application around October 14, 2014, he signed the following attestation passage in the Americo life insurance. And it says what he agreed to was any person who knowingly presents a false or fraudulent claim for payment of a loss or benefit or knowingly presents false information in an application for insurance is guilty of a crime and may be subject to fines and, and confinement in prison. We have read this application and represent to America that the statements made on this application are true, complete, and correctly recorded to the best of my, our knowledge and belief. I, we agree that America can rely on these statements. That same time frame, Wally signed a following passage in Tim Norman's America life insurance application stating as follows, I hereby certify that I have personally asked each question on this application to the proposed insured that I have truly and accurately recorded on the application the information supplied by him or her and that I have no reason to believe that any of the information provided is inaccurate or incomplete. If not, I have set forth my reservations in the agent comments remarks. And so he signed this saying what is in here is true. Tim Norman and Wally indicated in the Americo life insurance application that Tim Norman would be the sole beneficiary on the policy in the event of Andre Montgomery's death. Tim Norman and Wally, they represented in the Americo life insurance application that Tim Norman would pay the monthly premium of 156.04 from his U.S. bank account. Tim Norman and Wally represented that Andre was not under the care of a physician. They also falsely represented in the Americo life insurance application that Andre Montgomery had an annual income of $100,000. Tim Norman and Wally also falsely represented in the Americo life insurance application that Andre's height was 5'7", and that his weight was 165 pounds. On October 7, 2014, Tim and Wally exchanged text messages regarding the submission of the life insurance application. Norman says, I got him with me. What info do you need? So when we link, we can just sign papers, then be done. Norman don't want to talk about it in front of him. Wally says, okay, well, just answer the phone. Norman, he's with me. Wally, I know. Watch how I do it. Between October 16, 2014 and November 3rd, 2014, representatives of America repeatedly attempted to contact Andre Montgomery by means of Tim Norman's phone number, which appeared as Andre Montgomery's phone number on the life insurance application. Representatives of America also attempted to contact Wally via email and telephone with questions regarding the life insurance application, including the reason that Andre Montgomery could not own the life insurance policy rather than Tim Norman. On Friday, October 31st, 2014, Tim and Wally exchanged the following text messages. Norman asking policy, and Wally says, you should have by next Friday, by next Friday, they'll call you on Monday, Act like you're Andre. Norman, okay? And he also says, I ain't seen this in over a week, bro. The following Monday, November 3rd, 2014, Tim and Wally had the following text exchange. Wally, what's up? They're gonna call you. I need to talk to you first. Norman, I didn't get email with information. Wally, did they call you? Yup, I missed it. They left callback info. Wally says, call him back ASAP. Tim says, I need the info. 
birthday, social security, etc. Wally, I just sent it. Okay. Approximately 20 minutes later on November 3rd, 2014, Tim and Wally exchanged the following texts. Norman, all good. Wally, cool. On December 8th, 2014, Tim Norman had obtained a life insurance policy from a separate insurance company. He and Wally caused the Americo life insurance application to be withdrawn, which was still pending at the time. On or about October 31st, 2014, Tim and Wally completed and then submitted an application to the independent order of foresters by which Tim Norman saw a life insurance policy in the amount of $200,000, as well as an accidental death rider in the amount of $200,000 and a 10 year rider of $50,000 on his nephew, Andre Montgomery. The $200,000 accidental death rider would pay out in the event that Andre Montgomery died of something other than natural causes. The $50,000 10 year term rider would pay out in the event that Andre Montgomery died within 10 years of the policy's issuance. On the Forrester's application, Tim Norman and Wally identified Andre Montgomery's correct name, social security number, and driver's license and date of birth. On or about October 31st, Tim Norman signed the following passage in the Forrester's life insurance application. I, as evidenced by my signature in this application, declare that I have reviewed this application. I was asked every question that applies to me and provided the answer shown in this application to these questions. The statements Answers and representations contained in this application are full, complete, and true to the best of my knowledge and belief. At that same time, Wally signed the following passage in Tim Norman's Forrester's life insurance application, stating as follows, unless specifically stated otherwise in the producer report, I certify each of the following. I am not aware of undisclosed information about the health, habits, or lifestyle. <laughs> Wally also signed a passage specifically stating that he is not aware of any undisclosed information about the health habits or lifestyle of the proposed insured or a child. He signed that he personally met with the proposed insured owner and each child and reviewed the documents used to verify identity and birth date. He says that he asked the proposed ins insured if the proposed insured is a juvenile. He signed that he asked all the right questions. And in this same policy, Tim and Wally indicated that Tim would be the sole beneficiary on the policy in the event of Andre Montgomery's death. And Tim and Wally represented in the Forrester's life insurance application that Tim would pay the monthly premium of 185.16 from his US bank account. Tim and Wally represented in the Forrester's life insurance application that Andre Montgomery had an annual income of $28,000. Despite having represented on October 14th that Andre had an annual income of $100,000 in the Americo life insurance application. Both Tim and Wally falsely represented that Andre had a net worth of $200,000. In this one as well, they falsely represented that Andre Montgomery was 5'7", and that his weight was 165 pounds. Let it be known that Andre Montgomery's Missouri non-driver license indicated that his height was 5'11", and his weight was 185 pounds. And at no point did Andre Montgomery ever seek or obtain medical treatment at the People's Health Center, as it's been falsely alleged. Tim Norman falsely indicated in the Forrester's life insurance application that his relationship to Andre was both as his uncle and as his employer, when in fact, Tim Norman had no employment relationship with Andre at that time. Tim Norman also falsely indicated in the Forrester's life insurance application that Andre Montgomery's father was living 42 years old and healthy, when in fact, Andre Montgomery's father, the brother of Tim Norman, had died in 94. Tim Norman and Wally falsely represented in the Forrester's life insurance application that Andre had received a regular checkup from the attendant physician at the People's Health Clinic in December of 2013. Tim Norman and Wally 
falsely represented in the Forrester's life insurance application that there was no other life insurance application pending for the proposed insured with Forrester's or another insurer, when in fact the Americo life insurance application submitted by Tim and Wally was still pending. On November 6, 2014, Forrester's issued a life insurance policy on Andre Montgomery with a face amount of 200,000, an accidental death rider of 200,000, and a 10-year term insurance rider of $50,000. Tim Norman was the policy owner and sole beneficiary. On March 16, 2015, Tim and Wally exchange the following text. Wally says, I just contracted with this other company. I can get better cash value on Andre's policy and more coverage for what you're paying. You want me to transfer it? Instead of 200,000, it will be 300,000. Tim says, will he have to re-sign SHIT? Re-sign? Nah, I can transfer. Okay, cause he wildin' out here. Wally says, I got you. Norman ain't even seen the. On March 16, 2015, Tim and Wally completed an application to Royal Neighbors of America, by which application Tim Norman sought a life insurance policy in the amount of 250,000, as well as an accidental death rider in the amount of 250,000 on his nephew, Andre Montgomery. The $250,000 accidental death rider would pay out in the event that Andre Montgomery died of something other than natural causes. Policies with a face amount or rider amount under $250,000 did not require the insured to have a physical examination in connection with the policy application. Tim and Wally, they indicated in the Royal Neighbors Life Insurance application that Tim would be the sole beneficiary on the policy in the event of Andre's death. And again, Tim and Wally indicated in the Royal Neighbors Life Insurance application that Tim would pay the monthly premium of 18706 from his US bank account. March 16, 2015, Tim and Wally said in the application that Andre had an annual income of $50,000, despite having represented in the Americo life insurance application on October 14, 2014, that Andre had an annual income of $100,000, and in the Forrester's life insurance application on October 31st, 2014, that Andre had an annual income of $28,000. Tim and Wally falsely represented in the Royal Neighbors Life Insurance application that Andre had a net worth of $200,000. Both Tim and Wally falsely indicated in the Royal Neighbors Life Insurance application that his relationship to Andre was both as his uncle and as his employer, when in fact Tim Norman had no employment relationship with Andre. They both falsely represented that Andre had received an annual checkup from the attending physician at the People's Choice Center in September of 2014, despite the fact that Andre had never been seen or treated at that clinic. On March 17, 2015, Wally transmitted the life insurance application to Royal Neighbors through fax. On March 17, 2015, Tim and Wally exchanged the following text messages. Tim asked, how long is that change process going to take? Wally responds, a week. I took care of everything. Tim says, I want to sign papers while I'm in town if I have to. Okay, you need another check? Wally says, it's going to be 250000 Otherwise, he would have had to take a physical for more than that. Norman says, okay. Wally says, if I do need a check, you can just take a picture of a voided check just as long as the account numbers are legible and just text it to me. Tim asks, double on accidental? Okay. Wally says, of course, so it would be $500,000 in case of an accident. Norman replies, okay. On April 8th, 2015, Tim and Wally exchange the following text messages. Wally says, I am going to keep Andre with Foresters for now. Norman says, can't do the change? Your call. Wally says, they need his doctor info. Norman says, yeah, leave that SHIT alone. Doesn't have one, and I ain't seen little dude in weeks. Wally says, right. The royal neighbor's policy ultimately did not issue. On September 18, 2015, Tim and Wally completed and submitted an application to United of Omaha Life Insurance Company, where Tim sought a life insurance policy in the amount of 300000 
as well as an accidental death rider in the amount of 100000 on his nephew, Andre. The 100000 accidental death rider would pay out in the event that Andre Montgomery died of something other than natural causes. In the Omaha application, Tim Norman and Wally identified Andre's correct name, social security number, driver's license, and date of birth. And again, both Tim and Wally indicated in the Omaha life insurance application that Tim would be the sole beneficiary on the policy in the event of Andre's death. Again, Tim and Wally indicated in the application that Tim would pay the monthly premium of $141.36 from his US bank account. And again, just like in the other ones, they falsely represented Andre's height as 5'7 and that his weight was 165. And again, they falsely represented in this application that Andre had an annual income of $65,000. They also falsely represented in the Omaha life insurance application that Andre had not used any form of tobacco in the past 12 months. On September 18, 2015, Tim and Wally falsely said there was no other life insurance application pending or in force for the proposed insured when in fact the Forrester's insurance policy was in force at the time Tim Norman and Wally submitted the Omaha life insurance application. On September 18, 2015, Wally sent Tim the following message. I changed Andre's insurance to Mutual o Omaha in case they try to call you. I've been trying to get in contact with you your premium went from 189 to 141. You're welcome. And if you wanted to make the benefit over a mil, I could have made it happen for 300 a month. Call me, man. On or about September 18, 2015, Wally submitted electronically the Omaha life insurance application. The Omaha policy ultimately did not issue. The attempt to scam insurance companies was not done yet. On or about September 24, 2015, Tim and Wally completed an application to the Capital Insurance Company doing business as Liberty Bankers Life. In this one, Tim sought a life insurance policy in the amount of 250,000 as well as an accidental death and dismemberment rider in the amount of 250,000 on his nephew, Andre. And this 250,000 accidental death rider would pay out in the event that Andre died of something other than natural causes. And again, on this application, they correctly name Andre Montgomery, social security number, driver's license number, and date of birth. And both Tim and Wally indicated that Tim would be the sole beneficiary as he had in all the other ones. In this particular one, Tim and Wally indicated that Tim would pay the monthly premium of 183.50 from his US bank account. And in this particular application, they falsely represented that Andre had an annual income of $100,000. And they falsely represented that Andre had a net worth of $200,000. And once again, they falsely represented his height as 5'7 and his weight at 165. This time, they falsely represented in the Liberty Life Insurance application that Andre had received a physical from the attending physician at the Barnes Jewish Hospital in August of 2014. On September 22, 2015, Wally and James exchanged the following text messages. Wally says, Yo, we need to do that interview today and another one with Liberty. And he says, please give me 15 minutes to get this done. Bro, I thought you said you were going to do the interview for me. Tim says, hey, can you text me the info I need, the birthday, social number, whatever I need to answer the questions. Wally says, yeah, but I want to prep you because it's two companies. If you give me 15 minutes, I promise it'll be done. I'm going to text you everything. Tim says, okay, I can't talk because I'm with these suit and tie MFers. Then on September 23rd, 2015, Wally and Tim exchanged the following text where he's giving him the information he'll need for the phone call. And he puts his name, his social security, date of birth, saying the last time he went to the doctor was in October 2014 for a physical at Barnes Jewish Hospital. Call Mutual of Omaha at that number to do the interview, man. And he also says, we may have to make Andre the owner of the policy and then I'll switch names in six months. They won't let you be the owner off top. Tim says, no, that ain't gonna work. Don't switch owner, leave it alone then. And Wally says, he don't have to know. Okay, Tim says, 
He might not make it six months, bro. Not kidding. Wally says, damn, you'll still be the beneficiary, just not the owner. So if he makes it 30 years, you'll get all your money back. Oh, okay, gotcha. Wally says, but if he dies before, you'll get the benefit. You thought I meant beneficiary instead of owner. Tim says, yeah. Don't speak the lingo. Wally says, you can still be the beneficiary on all of the policies. Just make the call right quick. And then on September 24th, Wally transmitted the life insurance application to Liberty through fax. On September 28, 2015, Wally and Tim exchanged the following text messages. What's up, man? This is Wally. If you can do me a huge favor and get these interviews done today, I would really appreciate it. I'll win a trip if you do. We can do it on a three-way call and knock it out. And if you let me handle all your employees, we can talk about kickbacks. I know you're busy. Tim says, man, I'm worried about that thing, bro. I don't want to be recorded on that call. SHIT has changed. Wally. Oh, okay. Tim, he ain't going to be around much longer. The Liberty policy ultimately did not issue. On March 18, 2016, after the murder of Andre Montgomery on March 14, 2016, Wally placed two phone calls to foresters seeking to file a claim on the life insurance policy Tim Norman owned on Andre Montgomery. On March 21, 2016, Tim Norman contacted foresters twice by telephone seeking to file a claim on the life insurance policy he had taken out on Andre Montgomery. On March 30th, 2016, Wally placed a phone call to Forrester's lasting 10 minutes and two seconds. Two months later, Tim Norman submitted to Forrester's via US mail a written claim on his life insurance policy on Andre Montgomery. Less than two months after that, Tim received a letter via US mail from Forrester's indicating that Forrester's still had not received the finalized police toxicology and coroner's report necessary in order to process his claim on the life insurance policy. Between August of 2016 and November of 2016, Tim repeatedly contacted Foresters in connection with his attempt to claim the life insurance policy. Then on September of 2018, Tim Norman retained an attorney to represent him in connection with his attempt to claim the Forrester's life insurance policy. That attorney subsequently sent a letter to Forrester's indicating that Tim had authorized the attorney to file a lawsuit for failure to promptly pay the life insurance claim. On September 26, 2019, Forrester's sent Tim Norman a letter via US mail advising Tim Norman that as of the date of the letter, Forrester's still had not received all of the documentation required to adjudicate his claim on the life insurance policy. And so Wally, because he knowingly transferred, possessed, and used without lawful authority a means of identification of another person identified as Andre Montgomery during in relation to a felony violation where he committed wire and mail fraud knowing that the means of identification belonged to another actual person. And so, and he was hit with five counts of aggravated identity theft because of all of his actions in helping Tim get the life insurance policies out on Andre Montgomery. As I mentioned earlier, in one episode of Welcome to Sweetie Pies, little Charles and, and Andre Montgomery, they come walking through the room Little Charles is upset because Tim Norman was literally hitting them. They were fooling around at work, having fun. And to Tim, he thought that was inappropriate and he felt like he needed to put them in their place. The turn of events would also indicate what kind of person Tim was. And it's heartbreaking when you hear Andre as he comes in here talking about how he moved from Texas to come down to St. Louis to fix his life. And in this episode, Robbie, she's upset at Tim. Tim, justifying his actions, says that these women are too soft on these kids. They need someone to put them in their place. Miss Robbie, before firing him on the show, she tells him, Tim, you don't beat up your effing 
family. She tells him again, you don't beat up your family. She says, I wouldn't pop my family. He brushes it off like it's no big deal to only find out later that he would be convicted of a murder for hire plot on Andre is absolutely sickening and sad at the very same time. Then on Tuesday, August 18th, 2020, a star of the Oprah Winfrey Network reality TV series, Welcome to Sweetie Pies, had been arrested on federal charges for his involvement in a murder for hire plot with a stripper that resulted in the death of his 21-year-old nephew, Andre Montgomery. Tim Norman, he was arrested by FBI agents in Jackson, Mississippi on charges of conspiracy to use interstate commerce facilities in the commission of a murder for hire, resulting in death and was booked into the Madison County Detention Center at that time. Tim Norman and his mom, in an episode of Welcome to Sweetie Pies, they visited the area that Andrew Montgomery was murdered in. And it was sad to see that he could just act like he had nothing to do with it. And in the show, in the show, Tim says he's been avoiding the area, only to find out that two years prior to Montgomery's death, Norman took out a $450,000 life insurance policy on Andre, naming himself as the sole beneficiary. On March 10, 2016, Ellis of Memphis, Tennessee, contacted Montgomery, informing him via email that she was on her way into St. Louis. Then on March 13, the day before his death, Norman also flew into St. Louis from his then residence in Los Angeles. And as I mentioned earlier, the two prepaid cellular phones were later traced back to both Norman and Ellis. They were activated on March 14th and used throughout the day for communication between the pair. Montgomery texted Ellis the address where he was ultimately killed that evening. Ellis then called Norman after learning of Montgomery's location. Montgomery would be killed within the following hour. He had been recording a song inside a home on Natural Bridge Avenue when he received a text to come outside at 8.02 p.m. and was shot. Location data from Ellis's phone places her in the vicinity of where Montgomery was shot at the time of his death. Ellis then contacted Norman again after Montgomery's death before returning back to Memphis with another co-conspirator who hadn't been named yet. After Andre Montgomery was killed at this location, four days after his nephew's murder, Norman attempted to collect on Montgomery's life insurance policy, but was subsequently denied the funds because he failed to produce several requested documents. Meanwhile, Ellis reportedly made several cash deposits into a number of different bank accounts in Memphis between March 15th and 17th, totaling over $9,000. Prior to the homicide, her account had a negative balance. Less than a week later, on March 22nd, Ellis flew from Memphis with her mother and daughter to Los Angeles. Cell phone data acquired by investigators show that, on at least one occasion, she was in the same location as Norman. Ellis and her family returned to Memphis on March 28th. The affidavit also states that Norman wired Ellis a sum of $700 the following month. In 2018, he was charged for misdemeanor assault charges in Harris County, Texas, after allegedly punching a former employee in the face. The following year, a Houston-based property company sued Norman for unpaid rent, totaling over $254,000. He faced Similar problems in Jackson later that same year where he owns a chain of Sweetie Pies. The owners of the plaza building where the eatery was situated at the time said he owed them $100,000 in rent. Norman said he had been abstaining from paying rent because of ongoing problems with the building that hadn't been solved. The restaurant was previously ordered by the city to close down for eight days for a series of operational violations. The restaurant later moved to a location on East South Street in January of 2020. Like Norman, Ellis, who was known by her stage name, Alexis the Great, also has a criminal past, including misdemeanor convictions in 2006 and 2007 
for a drug offense and indecent exposure. She first received the indecent exposure charge in 2006 after local investigators said she was dancing nude at her place of employment, Pure Passion. At that time, Pure Passion was a license as a topless only adult entertainment establishment. The actual shooter, Travell Anthony Hill, he pleaded guilty on June 3rd, 2022 to conspiracy to commit murder for hire, as well as a separate count of murder for hire. Hill admitted to shooting and killing Montgomery in exchange for $5,000 and was recorded discussing the act with his brother on calls from jail. Terika Ellis, she was in a relationship with Norman at the time of the incident, and her role included assisting Norman in locating his nephew fully aware of his plan to kill Montgomery. While many turned their backs on Norman for such a horrific charge, his mother had not. In an interview with KTVI, Robbie Montgomery explained she couldn't abandon her child. She said, I've had tough times and I'm still having them, but God is good. My son is in trouble right now, but I'm his mother and I don't know no more about it than you because I hear it when you do, but I'm there for him to support. That's my son and I can't abandon him now. The Oprah Winfrey Network president at the time, Sherry Salata, she expressed the network's condolences to Montgomery's family. She said, at that time, our hearts are with Miss Robbie, Andre's uncle Tim Norman, and the rest of the Sweetie Pie's family. It's great now that there is justice for Andre Montgomery. Rest in peace. After the verdict of being guilty, Andre Montgomery's family were on the steps of the federal courthouse in St. Louis. Andre's older sister, Kaylin Griggs, she said that Tim Norman's testimony was nothing but crying and lying and he got the justice he deserved. Tim Norman, he gave a lengthy testimony while on the stand, and according to his attorney, he didn't leave much opening for cross-examination because he spilled everything. But Andre Montgomery's family said Norman's testimony was full of lies. On the stand, Tim Norman painted himself as an empathetic uncle who allowed his nephew to live in the lap of luxury in an apartment near Forest Park. However, Montgomery's aunt, the one in the blue shirt, she said she visited Andre's place and that it was a rundown efficiency. She said it had a rusty stove and what looked like a Salvation Army cot he was sleeping on with two metal chairs. It was nothing but a small box he was living in right next to Tim's penthouse. Norman had also testified he gave Andre access to his fleet of vehicles, which Montgomery's sister Kaylin Griggs said was not true. She says Montgomery had to call for a ride whenever he needed to go somewhere, including work. Griggs said that Norman only made a brief appearance at Montgomery's funeral in Texas wearing a bulletproof vest and flanked by security guards. Norman showed no emotion while there. Griggs even said he disrupted the proceedings when he had to leave to catch a flight to Los Angeles. Montgomery's aunt, she said, Tim's a Norman, Andre's a Montgomery. He's the last lineage of the Montgomery family. If anything happened to Miss Robbie, it would go to him. Tim didn't want that. There was a robbery that happened to Robbie Montgomery, the grandmother of Andre Montgomery, where there was a theft of $200,000 and then some that was stolen from Robbie Montgomery. Andre Montgomery allegedly was a suspect in that robbery. And so detectives wanted to question him and he had left to go back to Texas, to go home. And so Robbie was pretty upset. Everyone was pretty upset, but Andre denied it. Robbie Montgomery, she sends him a message, call me Robbie so you can take the test now. And the test is the lie detector test. The police wants to talk to you, they are waiting. I think you're playing games, but I hope you never need me again. I called you, you write back, and you didn't answer. If you're not guilty, why are you running? Andre responded, what are you talking about? Ain't nobody running from nothing. I haven't even been in your way. That's why I've been out of town cause you don't believe me. And I'm not about to get hurt from nobody for some SHIT. I didn't do, but nah, I'm not in town. I said that cause I don't know 
who all around you and I'm telling you, no, Tim is after me or something. I didn't do nothing. I don't have nothing to do with any of this. I haven't even been on that side of town, but I see you not doing nothing unless they question me first. Like I said, grandma, I'm not running. I just don't want to hate hurt and I know what Tim is capable of doing and I don't want nothing to do with whatever he got going on and my phone was dead I'm just now cutting it on Robbie responds I called you right back you say you're gonna take the test and you disappear what would you think you say you're not STL now you say you ain't Andre responded y'all say my phone tap I don't want people coming looking for me I'm telling you grandma I didn't do none of those things and I'm protecting myself but if you need me to come in town I can but when I do I come in in town for one day and I'm leaving back out just taking the test and that's all like I said I'll take the test but I'm not just about to be sitting in St. Louis when I know Tim got people looking for me and on March 8 2016 six days before his murder and two days after flight records established that he returned to St. Louis, Andre Montgomery sent the following message to Robbie Montgomery. And he says, I'm in town. When can we take that test? Robbie responded, I'll set it up for today and I'll call you back. Text me a number. Robbie wanted him to take the test. And Tim thought he committed this. According to Andre's family, he had nothing to do with this robbery whatsoever, but he was scared of his life. And all the text messages would then lead to Andre's murder. This young man taken way too soon. Andre, he moved to St. Louis to better his life. And in part of the episode where Tim gets fired, he even shares that a little bit. One, one, one of the whole most reasons why I came down here just to change my change life from all this drama stuff and come down and still drama down here with him and it, I ain't did nothing to him, I ain't made a man or nothing. He says right there, I came down here to change my life. And even though while he was in St. Louis, maybe it wasn't going as great as he would hope or others would have hoped, young man, finding his world st louis is a is a crazy it could be a crazy town and, and you could get mixed up very familiar with a lot of these areas that we're discussing today because i live in the surrounding areas of st louis so i'm literally a hop skip and a jump away from st louis and it breaks my heart when i lived up in florissant missouri for a little while before we moved as we were moving or right around the time that we moved there was a new location of Sweetie Pies opening up right around that area. And so I've been familiar with a lot of this following this story before I started the True Crime channel. So I've been following this story for a little while. Now he's convicted for the murder for hire plot against this young man, only 21 years old, when he was taken from this world by his selfish uncle. Thank you for joining me today, my friends. I'm Manny Rodriguez. I look forward to serving you again. Peace.